warm water that we've been warming outside the hood so we don't risk fire. We're gonna add the warm water to the crystallizing dish to make sure the reaction keeps going. You can see the reaction continues to get more and more cloudy. It's going well on its own today, which is great. It's raining. We're very lucky. <laughs> and we'll see if that keeps going on its own before we continue adding the rest of the bromo benzene. Adding another portion of, of ether. We could add through the condenser or through the top if you're very fast. <laughs> And so, you notice also we now have our water going because the reflux is quite strong and even when it's not in the water bath, it is boiling, it does create its own heat, you can see that. So the reaction is quite exothermic and we have lots of bubbles coming off and we can of course bring our warm water bath up and boil it even faster. And if the warm water gets a little cool, we can always add a little more warm water into our bath. Okay, Yes. Like add the rest of this. Yes. All right. So let's now we're ready to go ahead and add the the remainder of the bromo benzene. We usually start the reaction with the smallest amount of bromo benzene first, just to get it going. And then you add a little more as it goes along. And then the final step is to dilute it even further with a little more ether. And we're going to then have a long reflux period. So now we're adding another three milliliters into the closed addition funnel. This is basically so we can dilute the solution to its proper concentration and also rinse out any bromo benzene that might be left in the sides of that funnel. So we're gonna go ahead and just dump all that ether in at once. And you can see that the mixture is still boiling quite rapidly. And so there goes our ether down into the solution. One of the things that students sometimes get confused about here is that Ether's boiling point is so low that it doesn't take much to actually boil it. So we, we don't even really have to have that much heat to boil it. It can still feel cool to the touch even though it's boiling. For the first part of the formation of the green yard, we're going to, we, we just lowered the reaction flask down and added a bunch more warm water to the crystallizing dish. And we're going to do an extended reflux period so that we can react as much of that magnesium as possible. We're in the middle of our 20 minute boiling or reflux period here and you can see the mixture has started to turn darker. We've had to add more hot water so that the ether will stay boiling. Uh, eventually the boiling does slow on its own, but as you get it back to a boil again, the solution then turns quite a bit darker as you can see down there. We hope that all the magnesium is going away and we're just gonna let it finish its uh, 20 minute reflux now. So we're nearing the end of the 20 minute reflux period and we're getting ready to measure out the acetophenone. So we're going to measure out 0.8 mLs of the acetophenone and put that into 6 mLs of ether. All right. And that, was, that is going to eventually go into this addition funnel. During the um, reflux period, we noticed that the addition funnel started to have some ether vapor travel up the arm and condense back in there, so we've added that back in. You should reflux with it off, however, and if you have any ether that's condensed, add that back in before going to the next stage. You can see that right here, the mixture is nice and dark gray, brown, and there's a lot of residue along the sides of the beaker, which shows we're probably making a significant quantity of our um, of our Grignard reagent, and we also have a little stirring rod that we added to kind of crunch up some of the ether when the boiling slowed down, and it showed that there's a lot of residue on the side. Probably that means we've got a good reaction going there. So we're gonna go ahead and add now, without stopping the boiling, without stopping the stirring, with the stopcock closed, add our acetophenone solution carefully into our addition funnel. Right. It smells like cheap shoes. Yes, <laughs> that like sickly sweet smell mm -hmm. of acetophenone. And again, the joy of this uh, whole setup is that because we have the addition funnel, we don't have to take the stopper off to add it. So um, let's go ahead and start it. This is this is the moment of truth. I'm gonna how make sure. Do you want me to add it? Go ahead and add it quickly down in there. We'll see how it changes the solution. Notice the boiling increased rapidly on addition of the acetophenone. That reaction is quite exothermic. 
something is reacting. Right, so it's all been added in there. Notice the solution has now started to make a cloudy precipitate. And we got much more rapid condensation off of our condenser. Make sure the stir bar is going. If you look at that now, the stir bar seems to be moderately stuck. Yeah, I, I turned it off and turned it back on again. Yeah, so it's getting stuck in some sort of glue at the bottom a little bit, but we have formation of quite a bit of now whitish solid that's happening there. All right, so we're gonna let that go for a little while for its reflux period. 15 minutes, and then we're going to come back with the next portion of the video. Okay, so we're at our end of our reflux period. You can see it's still refluxing, and it's got that nice cloudy mixture. And we're going to put it into the cooling bath now, keep it stirring, but cool it down. So once we get that clamped in a cooling water bath, it should come nicely to a Oil, and you can see we do have quite a bit of solid stuck to the edges of that beaker, which is what was expected. That's our, our Grignard complex, Grignard product complex. All right, so look, we're ready to now add the 12 milliliters of ammonium it chloride into a, and we can at least add it into this. All right, so we're going to add our ammonium chloride into the addition funnel. And once we open that, that will be the end of the anhydrous portion of our reactive reaction today. You may now breathe. Yes, you may now breathe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Put it. it looks like the refluxing has stopped, so I think it's okay to go ahead and add it. Uh. All right, so this is the addition of the water and the ammonium chloride, slightly acidic solution that will allow us to protonate the Grignard complex, and it will also end up creating two layers in our reaction mixture. with the aqueous layer hopefully sinking to the bottom and the ether floating on the top and you can start to see that right here. Just for a second to see it. Okay. So we're letting it stop stirring. Oh, perfect. Um, you can even see the, the, the aqueous solution going down to the bottom layer yeah. on the far left there. Okay, so it's all finished adding, so we're going to go ahead and stop this and come back with the next portion.